New York Governor Hochul disinvited from prides after budget dispute. LGBTQ plus organizations in the state of New York are reacting to the budget put forward by Governor Kathy Hochul. The budget redirects revenue generated by the federal 340B drug pricing program away from community health centers and into the state's coffers. The 340B program requires any pharmaceutical company that does business with Medicaid to provide deep discounts on prescription drugs to certain hospitals and clinics that serve low income or needy populations. Those medical facilities can then get reimbursed for those drugs by health plans at higher rates and pocket the difference. Under the new budget, the state plans to transition Medicaid members to a new pharmacy benefit plan known as New York RX, a move that LGBTQ plus groups will say mean a loss of services for many of their members. The governor has been disinvited from attending the Buffalo Pride Parade and many other groups, including New York City Pride, are considering the same. The Pride Center of Western New York and Evergreen Health said in a statement, quote, we have informed Governor Hochul and her administration that their request to attend the Buffalo Pride Parade and Festival has been declined. We have not arrived at this decision lightly, and we are saddened to have made this stand." End quote. Williams explains why. Four prominent organizations representing health care rights for the LGBTQ community are telling New York City's Pride Parade organizers that they won't march alongside Governor Hochul. Housing Works, the Alliance for Positive Change, Callan Lord, and Harlem United sent a letter objecting to a possible loss in health care funding in Hochul's budget and stating that if a change goes through, quote, Governor Hochul's status as an LGBTQ ally is revoked. We would not participate in a parade that lifts up a governor who does not support all LGBTQ New Yorkers. <laughs> um, I'm going to say something at this table is I find this, this conversation very dangerous. Um, I find attacking the New York governor who barely won the election in New York to a very right-wing Trump sympathizer um, candidate um, and then trying to take her down in the state of New York. I understand the problem is our, our health insurance programs are messed up and the budget of New York is also a big challenge to undertake. And this is, instead of bringing the governor to the table and having a conversation, this is cancel culture at its worst. And I think disinviting the governor is a big mistake. I guess what I would say is that um, it's incumbent on us not to only put political pressure on those that we consider our political enemies, but also our friends. It's not enough for people, for politicians, just to make commitments to our work. We also have to hold them accountable for fulfilling their promises and commitments to us. I don't know enough about the New York budget to say whether or not the governor has done that or not. I see your point, but I think it's always a good practice for us not only to hold our, our enemies accountable, but also our friends. I'm, I'm curious to that observation, Ryan, because I, I actually I agree with both observations <laughs> that you've made. In, in this instance, what is your gut telling you? Do, uh, when when certain group organizations are saying, here's our standard and, and we're revoking your LA, LGBT allyship over this issue, um, uh, the governor clearly is not anti-LGBT. Right. And, and, and let's even agree with them for a moment. Do you think it rises to the level that it means we're withdrawing from the table and we're and and we re, we we revoke your allyship because that's what these four organizations have said. No, what I would say to Jeff's point is we never want to take coming to the table and having an opportunity to work together to educate to learn uh, off you know out of the process. Anytime you you close that down that conversation, that's when progress stops I, being made. I ask you that question, um, and and I you all probably want to get into this. I ask this question because. My criticism of Buffalo Pride mm -hmm. is specifically that. I don't know enough about the finance of New York State and why the governor has done this. But at the end of the day, Buffalo Pride has made it clear, you are now removed from our sphere and into no man's land. Um, the alternative to Governor Hochul, uh, Hochul it, it gets much, much worse. So while... Uh, uh, that removal seems to me uh, anti of this idea that we keep the negotiation at the table. No, we don't even not only want you in the table, we don't want you in the room with us anymore, which is what Buffalo Pride is. It's a big living room uh, on Main Street in mm -hmm. Buffalo. And we have all collectively said, nope, 
we don't want you to participate to the governor. And if they think that they have issues in New York with Governor Hochul, mm-hmm. I invite them to come to Florida. Yes. To talk to Ron <laughs> exactly. DeSantis. Well, I mean, for me, I would think, isn't there like a middle zone, like for someone like her? Because we, I think we all agree that she's certainly somewhat of an ally for us. So, you know, allies make mistakes sometimes. Like, like, you know, talk about what she did and, and maybe we don't agree with it, but to just shut her down, I don't agree. I think that she's someone that we might want to use to our benefit. I think disinviting is yeah. drastic. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> now you're going to push somebody back into a corner if you don't do what we want. That doesn't look good for our group at all. How is that helpful? It's not. No, and I I also think we should be reminded that, you know, Buffalo just also was the center of terrible gun violence. And Governor Hochul is for um, sensible gun laws, which also (laughs) affect the LGBTQ plus community. So, again, I think we're putting people in boxes. It's just a really bad precedent. And unfortunately, we have a a governor that doesn't care about any sort of sensible gun laws. Absolutely. Uh, Speaking of gun laws. Even (laughs) even if this was going to be the conclusion of allies, um, uh, to Ryan point we hold all of our allies uh to the fire and for them to commit uh it's it's really difficult for me to believe that we would characterize governor hochel as not an ally of the lgbtq community it's very hard for me to accept that yeah Uh, one of the things that will come from this in terms of my comments uh or or my understanding of this story is i must read much much more about what's going on in new york because i don't know enough of how we could have come to this conclusion in our community, which I commit I'm going to do now. Yeah. All right. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.